Uh, welcome back, IBMI nerds. Uh, let me just get this screen recorder working. There we go. Yes, that is the uh, Starship Enterprise. It's the real one. No, it's not. We're not here to talk about Starship Enterprise or uh, Star Trek. We're here to talk about IBMI journals. I've just written this big blog. Actually, it was, it was an old blog that um, I was tidying up that had a bunch of mess in it and just a little bit outdated. So I added a few things to it, talking about what are journals, what are the journal entries within the journal, and what are the journal receivers, the buckets that store the information that the journal's capturing. And then I did some screenshots to teach the new guys exactly what you're doing with journals and journal receivers, and then showed some of the audit journal entries. And by the time I got to the bottom, I thought, this might have lost or confused some people, especially if you're a fresher in the IBMI world. So let's record a video. So here I am, a video recording in progress. That's it. That's this one that you're watching right now. So let's do a quick video. I don't think this will take more than three to four minutes. Um, my ambition is to create a library, create a journal receiver, create a journal that dumps into that journal receiver, create a file, and then I'll just update it. Or then I'll journal the file to the journal. Then I'll update the file with maybe up to data or something just to do a quick edit, add a record, and then we can look at the entries and see exactly what happened to that file. So you'll understand in real time exactly what a journal does. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's do all of this in good old green screen or command line interface, as I like to say nowadays. Uh, well, mainly because mine isn't a green screen, it's a white screen. I just prefer this color. Yours might be green on black, but I like green on white. Okay, here we are at the command line. I've just signed on to my IBM I system. So I'm going to create a library, which I'll call um, journ temp. So I'll do the create library command um, and uh, journal example library. Okay, library journ temp created. I'm going to work with that library. So we'll see the objects. I'll create everything in there and we'll see them as they're being created. So I'm going to do a work obj. Uh, journ temp asterisk all. Show me everything in the journ temp library. As we can see, there's nothing in here currently, right? But I'm still at the command line at the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a journal receiver. So my journal receiver, I'm going to call it receive. Why not? And I'm going to put it in journ temp. I'm going to leave all of my parameters as default just so you can see them there. So uh, this is an example receiver. I press enter. So there's my receiver sitting in my library. It's not attached to anything yet. So we're going to do that. So now we're going to create a journal. So we're going to do the create journ command. I'm going to prompt it up. We're going to call our journal journ <laughs> in journ temp. And it asks us what receiver do you want to attach it to? And we want to attach it to receive in journ temp. All of my other attributes here, I can say whether I want the system to manage the receivers, i.e. when one gets full, it will generate a new one. Uh, when that gets full, it will generate a new one. We have the size defined in here. We want to know if we want the system to delete the receivers once they've been backed up, how big those receivers are. Um, so what it will do by default is the first receiver, it will be called receive. And then once uh, that gets full, depending on the size that I've qualified in here, it will generate a new one called receive 0001. And then when that one gets full, it will call receive 002, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, journal caching, this is something interesting for you to look at. Um, not for this example, but journal caching can greatly improve the response times of journals on your system. We did this with a client. We turned journal caching on. It made a huge difference. They had a massive journal journaling everything in their casino system. And turning on caching had a notable improvement. For right now, I'm getting carried away. Let's keep it simple. So I've created a journal and a journal receiver. And that journal is poking into that journal receiver. Right, the journal's ready to start doing something. Let's create a very simple file. Create physical file in a journ temp. And I'm going to call this file nick and give it a record length of, I don't know, 100, 100 characters. That's the most simple file you can possibly create, right? There's my file. Uh, all I have to do now is start journaling that file. So I do a start journal physical file. And it says, what file do you want to journal? I'm going to journal Nick in journ temp. And I'm going to point it at that the journal called JRN in journ temp. And it asks me a couple of questions, right? 
what images do I want to record? I.e., if I make a change to a row in there, do I want to see what it was before and what it was after, or do I just want to see after? Well, I want to see both. I want to see what it was before and I want to see what it was after. Now, do I want to journal every time a file is opened or closed by a program? You might want to have this turned on, opening and closing, um, because it will show the file being opened, the member being opened, and show what programs are doing it. But the trouble is, lots of programs will open a file, not do anything with the data that's in there, and then close. And that just kind of fills up your journal receiver. So uh, I don't want to store open and close information normally, but I'm going to put it in here now just for this example so we can see exactly what's going on. And the logging level is errors only or everything. I'm just going to leave it on errors. Okay, one of one files have started journaling. So we have our test library. It's got a journal receiver. It's got a journal looking at that journal receiver. And it's got a file that's being journaled by that journal. If we want to see, confirm that that file is journaled, if we do a display file description on journ temp and look at Nick, somewhere in here, it tells us that this file is journaled. I know it does. I've just got to find it. There we are down the bottom here. It tells us all the information about the file being journaled, right? File is journaled. Yes. It's currently looking at a journal called journal in journ temp. It's journaling both images and emitting open and closes or including open and closes. Okay, so the journal's running. It's doing things with that file. Let's display the journal, right? Display journal, journal in journal temp. What's in this journal? Okay, this is what we have so far. We have three entries. I wonder what they are. Okay, the first entry is a journal receiver being attached. Okay, this, this is like the birth of the journal doing something. The next entry is, oh, I've started journaling a file. That's pretty interesting, right? I can say display entry details, and it tells me what the file was that I started journaling, what the job was that was signed on that did it, and what the username was. That's This is who I'm signed on as. And, of course, the date and time that that operation happened. Let's look at the next entry. And here we are, it's now journaling the member because every file has a member. So it gives us that absolutely granular information that I just started journaling a file called Nick in library journal temp. How about we go and do something in that file? I'm going to use updata, which is the IBM file editing tool. I'm going to edit journal temp slash Nick. I'm just going to add one row to that file, right? Here's my empty file. Uh, this is a new row of data that I'm adding. I press enter, I'll come out of the editor, and back to command line. As you can see, nothing different from my usual operations. Journaling has no change on how your programs work at all. Uh, well, it does under the covers, but I'll get to that in a minute. So here we are. Everything looks the same, right? Let's have a quick look at that journal again. So if I do display journal, journal temp, this is what I'm seeing in here now. Oh, there's some more information. Well, that's rather odd, you say. So what's this row here? What's this put row that's appeared? Oop, there's my dentist reminding me that I have to go to the dentist tomorrow. We'll ignore that message. So here is our row of journal receiver data in our file. This is a record being added to the file. This is a new row of data. You see the type is a PT for put. Why isn't there a before and after, Nick, I hear you saying? Well, it's because there was no before. This is just a put. So let's go and edit that data again, up to data. And I'm going to change this row. Uh, it's changed to this now. OK, here's our new data. And I'm going to press Enter. It updates that file. I come out. Let's have a look at that data now. So display, journ, journ, temp. Oh, now we see some more information, right? Here's our put of the original row. Here's the update before image, update before, and here's the update after, update post. So if we look at these two rows, here's the row that it was. This is a new row of data, update before image. Here we have it up here, okay? And here is what it changed to, the update after image. I don't know why they didn't call it UA. It would have made much more sense, but... That's IBM for you. Um, and of course, you can use all these different function keys down the bottom to look at all different values of what's going on in this journal receiver. Uh, that's journal receivers.
101. Now, let's say this journal receiver starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger after millions and millions of rows are being updated on the file. Of course, you can have any number of files being journaled to that journal and that receiver. When it starts getting full, it will generate a new one. So let me force the journal to generate a new receiver. So if I just say change journ, journ temp journ, the journal receiver is the same, but I can say gen for generate a new one. And when I press enter, it will generate a new receiver. So look, what it's done is it's now connected to this new receiver. So I wonder what's going to happen when I say display journal journ temp. Ooh, the journal has only got one entry in there because it's looking at that new journal receiver, right? And the new journal only has one entry in it, which says this is a previous journal receiver being attached. Now, the trouble is I still want to see what was happening just a few minutes ago with those file edits. Luckily, journals will look all the way back through the chain for the information that you want to look for. You just got to tell it on the display journal command. So let's prompt up the display journal command. We could just say we just want to see one particular file, if there's loads of files, or one particular object that's being journaled. As we come all the way down here, we can see the range of journal receivers. So do I want to start looking at the current journal? No, the current journal is the one that's called, or sorry, the current receiver, because the receiver is called receive 001. Look at the values I can put in here. Current, current chain, available chain, single chain. If I just say current chain, this says, all of the current receivers for this journal that are on the system. So when I press enter, I now see these entries that is pulled from the previous receiver and this entry that is pulled from the new receiver. So that's just something to bear in mind when you're looking at journal receivers. Journal receivers, really, really easy, right? Really, really powerful. They'll even record things like authority changes. The only thing that you want to bear in mind is that if you're using... Um, journal receivers, you'll also be using something called commitment control, which you may have heard of. Commitment control says, don't commit the file changes to the actual files until the program issues a commit statement or a rollback, which removes them. So if you imagine you start commitment control, commitment control says, right, any files that are journaled in this program, I want you to hold those rights going to the database file until you issue the commit statement. This almost feels like a completely separate video I should do about commitment control. So I will do that, but for right now, I'll give you a quick overview. If you called a program and it wrote 10 rows to a file and it was in under commitment control, the file would look empty right up until the end of the program when your program finally issues a commit, even though it's gone right, 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 right. They're all like held in the commitment boundary. Then when the program issues a commit, all 10 of those rows will appear in the file. Uh, or the program issues a rollback and ends, and none of it would appear in the file. It's pretty simple. It's a really easy way of uh, checkpoint processing in programs. If you're, uh, Let's say you are uh, raising an order in an order entry, and you're writing an order header and multiple order lines and maybe sales information. Um, you wouldn't want that to crash halfway through and leave a corrupted order. So you might use journaling and commitment control to get right to the end of the process. And the user can say, are you sure you want to place this order? Yes or no. And when they place it, it issues a commit. Or if they say, no, actually, I don't want to, even though it's taken me an hour to enter everything, screw it. I've had enough of this. They click cancel and the program issues a rollback. and doesn't write anything. So uh, it's a useful technique, something to bear in mind. But commitment control definitely warrants its own video. And uh, I'll do that another day. I haven't got time today. Anyway, I said this is going to take a few minutes and I've waffled on for ages now. But I hope this is a good example uh, for using journaling and journal receiving. It's really easy. Uh, the nice thing is I can now end journal physical file if I want to end journaling for the NIC file in journ temp. That file is no longer journaled. Let's have a look at the display journal with the current chain. And this gives us the entire story of the poor old Nick file from being journaled to being um, the initial row being written to it, an update before, an update post. There's a new receiver. Here's the new receiver being done. Here's an end journal. And here's the end F, whatever on earth, 
EF stands for. You can always go to any of the positions on this screen and press help with your cursor and it tells you what every single one of these values stands for. In fact, I'm gonna copy all of these values into my blog entry before I post it along with this video. So um, that's it, I'll stop waffling and blathering on. I hope this helped someone out there and as usual, I will see you on the flip side. Okay, bye.